Hello everyone, this is Mohammed Sadiq here. In this session, we learn about the bar chart. So first, what is a bar chart? Bar chart is nothing but a chart which has a collection of vertical bars. Okay, see the bars can be vertical or horizontal. Generally, if the bar is vertical, we call it as a column chart. And if you have a horizontal bars, we call it as a bar chart. Horizontal bar chart or generally called as a bar chart. Now, irrespectively, so when you talk about a bar chart, is a chart which has a collection of bars where each bar is going to represent a okay, discrete value of a dimension. Like example, in this case, I have what you call it as a subcategory. So, and each particular, uh, what you talk about this belongs to a sub individual subcategories. Okay. So, each bar is representing the, representing the subcategory sales. And second thing is what is happening? The length of the bar is representing the measurable value. That is the sales value. So what we understand from this is we see that phones and chairs have done a better sales. And when you see in this case, like, you know, arts, envelopes, binders, they have done a very low sales. Okay. See, the main purpose of going for this particular bar chart is you want to have a kind of comparisons you want to do, okay, between the individual items or individual uh, Cat, uh, what I say, a discrete value of a dimensions. You want to do a kind of a comparison. So that is where exactly we'll be using this particular bar chart. Now let us see practically how do we create this particular bar chart. Okay. So let us see practically how do we create a bar chart in Power BI. Now if I want to create a uh, what I say a bar chart, I will go to this particular insert tab. In the insert tab, we have this particular galleries. So here I'll just take this particular bar chart. So I'll just take this particular clustered column bar chart when I'll just select this. So as soon as I select this, you can see a kind of a template which just shows it's a bar chart which has a collection of bars. Okay. See, the minimum requirement for creating a bar chart is we should have at least one measurable value. Okay, what is measurable values? It's a numerical values. It can be sales, profit, quantity or something. And optionally, it can have a dimension. It can have one dimensions or it can even have more than one dimensions. Now, let us do this. So when I add this one, the very first thing it says, okay, the type of chart is the clustered column chart. And here you can see we have X axis and the Y axis. So generally X axis for representing the dimensions, Y axis for representing the measurable values. So that is what we generally use it. Fine. So I will use the same thing. So in the, uh, what you say, I as I said, we need to have at least one measurable value. So what I'll do, I'll just go to the Y axis. We have this add button here. Here we are adding the data fields. I just click on this add and I say I want the sales value to be there. As soon as I select the sales, because as I said, for a bar chart, we need one measure, minimum one measure is good enough. So it tells me the total sales. You can see 2 million. It is more than 2 million. The sales is been done. Fine. Hey, now this is a total sales. What is there? What I want is I want to divide this based on the each um, category wise or subcategory wise. Yeah, you can do that. So for that, I will use a x-axis that is x-axis is mainly used for the dimension so for that i'll just click on this x-axis we have add the data fields i'll click on this i say example let us go with the category when i select the category you can see how the sales are happening for the category wise so technology has done the highest sales then is office supplies and then is the uh, sort of furnitures and then is the office supplies or let us take a different thing now because let us take a uh, has a, what is a chart which has more number of columns so I'll just go for the add. I'll take the subcategory because subcategory has a relatively good number of columns. So you can see here, it shows me all the columns that is there in the subcategory. Okay, fine. So now what I will do is when you're creating this particular chart, so we do also have what you call it as a focus mode. So you can see, uh, when I say focus mode, it covers the complete screen. You get a wide area and we can do a proper customization on this, like, you know, the labelings and all these things. Now, what we understand from here, so since I have taken X axis, I have taken a subcategory and Y axis is your sum of sales, fine. So you can see each subcategory, how much sales they have been performed, that is showing with the length of the bar, okay. So each bar is representing the individual subcategory. The length of the bar is representing the measurable value, which is nothing but it's a sum of sales, fine. 
Now, we can easily understand that phones and chairs have done a very good sales and these products have done a lower sales and each this one. Hey, now, what I want to do is I want to do a little bit of customization is what I want to add the labels to this. How much of sales has been done? See, anyhow, we can easily come to know like, you know, what is the sales has been done here? This is 3 lakhs. This is 3.5 lakhs. So this is just almost very close to 3.5 lakhs. We don't look for the exact numbers, but, you know, we can easily compare like, you know, this is like 2 lakhs. So this is about 2 lakhs. Okay, thanks. But still, you want to display that labels and things. So what is that we do? We have this particular year care called as add your visuals. You can see on your right hand side. So we have this particular thing called as add your visuals. Okay, so I will just take this particular add your visuals. Okay, so that is. And here you can see you want to add the data labels. You can just hit on it. And you can see automatically your data label is added. So 330k, that is 3.3 lakhs, 328k, 3.28 lakhs, 2.24 lakhs, okay, 2.07 lakhs, okay. And this is again 2 lakhs, 1 lakhs, 89,000, and so on. Fine. So we have this data. Now, I want to have a further customization on this. Okay, I want to change the font of this. So that means when I'm doing formatting, okay, this X is what is their subcategories. I want this particular labels to be more highlighted and things. In that case, what I do, I have those more options here. So I can see in this, we have more options. I'll click on those more options and in the more options. So what is that we do is we have this particular thing called as the data labels. I'll just take this particular data labels. In the data labels, you can see here, we have something called as, yeah, how you want this labels to be presented. I want to customize the values. So what I do, I'll just take the values here and I'll just do a customization. I want to slightly increase the font. I'll make it as bold. I want to make it as pure black. I think the sound looks good. Okay, fine. Something like, you know, and, and as the look. Now the same way, X axis. What are the subcategory names are there? I want to display. So I want to enhance that. So what I do here, I have this particular X axis. That is a horizontal axis in the bottom. Hey, I want to make it bold. Yeah. So I can reduce the font a little bit so that hey, it can be arranged. Okay. Or I can, I want to increase the font. Let us increase it. And I'll make this also as the pure black. Okay. I think it looks good. The same way you can change for the X axis, Y axis, and all these things. So we can do all the customizations. Okay, this is a place where we do the customization. See, the other thing is, okay, um, I can also customize the coloring. Each bar, you want to have a different colors or I want to change the colors. I don't like this blue color. Instead of blue color, I want to have an orange color or something. So in that case, what do you do? Uh, we just go to this format. There we have the columns. When you go to the columns, you can see it is showing the color. So I can just change this. See, I say I want to go with the orange color. You can see all the bars are showing with the orange color. Hey, no, what I want is I want an individual subcategory to be shown with a different color. So in that case, you can see we have this particular show all. So I can just say on this. So as soon as you on, it shows me all the subcategories. Okay, with this common color, but you can change it. Say chairs, I want to look in blue color. I want the storage to be in the pink color. I want the tables to be in, okay, so XYZ color, black color. Okay, cool. Individually, you can just select it and we can also assign the colors. So this is how we can assign the individual bars with a different color. Fine. So this is, we are coloring this create me. Now, I say no. Uh, let me just remove this. I don't think so. This is needed now. Okay. Or like, you know, we can have a, see, this is just like, you know, showing with the different, this one. Hey, you know, what I want to do is, I want to display this with a gradient color. That means I want to display this based on the sales value. So here, we can also do the coloring based on the function. You can see there is a FX function. And when you hit focus on that, it says it's nothing but conditional formatting. So conditional formatting is nothing but how do you format based on a specific condition. So I'll just go for this. Okay. So in the previous session, we have seen this particular conditional formatting is same thing. So I want this coloring to so be something like this. The highest value should be in the dark blue and the lowest value I want in the light blue. Okay. So I'll just say it as okay. Yeah. And you can see the way the coloring happens. So as now it becomes more, um, what can say analytics related kind of thing. So the bars with dark blue is the higher sales and the bars with the lighter, uh, lower color, that is light blue, they are the lower sales. Okay, so here the color is representing the sales value. So now, 
yeah this is what see now what happens in this one is the higher is the sale is the darker is the color the lower is the sales is the lighter is the color and the length also representing the same information is this taller is the bar is the higher is the sales the shorter is the bar is the lower is the sales so both the color is also representing the sales and the length also is representing the sales now since we have a length and we have a color why don't we add a second what you say the color representing a different measure like say i what i want is any your length is representing the sales but with the help of the color i want to represent the profit how much profit okay each sub category is given so it's not like you know the product which is doing the higher sale is always giving a higher profit there are possibilities some uh, products which is where the sales are low might would have been given with a higher profit i want to format based on that so what will i do here i'll just go to the fx i want to format based on the different measure see format style i'll take a gradient style because whenever you do the formatting based on the measures we take a gradient and here instead of sum of sales i will just change this to profit take it as sum of profit and one more thing is the profit can be a negative value sales will not be a negative value because sales can be zero sales cannot be negative but the profit is like you know you have purchased a product for some x amount but you are selling at less than x okay less than that that means we are selling at a negative value so there can be a negative profit so what will i do is i just say highest profit let me give a good color here so i think highest profit i'll try to give it a dark green and the lowest profit i will give it as a red color so that can be an kind of a thing profit and this one this is fine can be done uh, as soon as i say okay so you can see here so you're just showing with the different colors here so what we understand from here is the length of the bar is representing the sales and the color of the bar is representing the profit the darker the green color is the higher is the profit okay the light green is the lower profit and when it becomes to red color okay so when it is changing to a kind of a brownish color reddish there's a profit as low and when it is dark red that means there is a negative profit that is what you are able to understand from this so what we understand here the copiers have done uh, is having a much darker green than the phones is it so that means that has given me the higher profit okay so now what i want to do is i want to display the profit there and uh, let me show you any of the sales are been displayed on your y axis i want to display the profit over here and i want to give the coloring also so i will try to add one more color here as mid color so that i can clearly differentiate the what is the profit and the uh, what is a positive sales negative sorry a positive profit and the negative profit so what will i do is i'll just go to this fx since it has a mid value so i'll just add a middle and middle may i'll try to add a white color so that if the profit is low let it be as a lighter color but what happens other thing is the mid color comes in the somewhere in the mid range okay so i want to customize the mid value as zero if it is zero let it be a whitish color and less than zero let it go with the, as a reddish color okay so three things here um so i think i'll just should go with this one and i'll just say it as okay yeah here we go so we understand this okay telling that tables bookcases and the suppliers they are in a red color so that means they are low sales and the green color like copiers accessories papers phones they are green color that means a good profit but out of which also we can see the copier is ha having a dark green color so that means they have done a better profit than the phones so but we see the phones have done a very good sales and good profit but the copiers have done an average or below average sales but the profit is good so now it will be better if i show the profit values here okay so i want to customize this label so in the labels what i want to do is i want to display the profit there okay in the labels so what will i do is if i have to customize the labels i'll go to the data labels here so i have expanded the data labels in the data labels we have the values to format that bold and things but what i want to do is i want to customize the label so you can see we have a custom label here okay i'll just make this to on and i'll just give my own label here i want to show the profit when i say profit 
So you can see here, it shows me the profit and we can easily come to know that is, see, these two are in green color, but I feel that copier is much darker than this. And we see that, yeah, here we have a copier, we have a profit of 56,000 and uh, phones, we just have only the profit of 45,000. So we understand that. So phones have done more than three lakhs, almost close to three and a half lakhs. And it has given me only a profit of 45,000. Whereas the copiers, it has just done the sales of almost less than one and a half lakh. And it has given me higher profit than what a product which has done much more than double of that. Okay. So that means for three and a half lakh, you can see 45,000. For just one and a half lakh, you can see 56,000 profit. So that means we are getting more profit with a very less uh, below average sales. Okay. In the case of copiers. So that means sales value is less, but the profit is really very eye catching. And the concern, major concern here is tables. They've done a very good sales. Okay, more than 2 lakhs. You can see when I focus there, it says 2 lakhs 6,965. That is 2 lakhs 7,000 ka sales. And where is the profit? Profit is minus 18,000. That's negative profit. You can see the same thing in the case of bookcases. Okay, so sales is 1 lakh 14,000, but profit is minus 3,000. Supplies. You can see that the sales is 46,000. The profit is minus 1,000, negative profit. So since it is the negative, they're in the reddish color. And we can see missions. It is almost in the whitish color. The reason is we can see the sales value, 189,000. For 189,000, what is the kind of a value you're getting? Only 3,000. So that means it is almost very close to zero, you know, the profit. So that is the reason almost very close to white color. Okay, zero is going to be pure white, but you can see a slight color is a slight Okay, color is there. Okay. And uh, when you see in this case, you know, they are like, you know, giving me a low profit, but at the same time, the sales are also are low. So they are the small, small items like labels, fasteners, envelopes. So the value itself is very low, the product value. So they have done a very low sales and the low profit is fine. Okay. This is what we are able to understand from this particular bar chart. Okay. So that means by adding this particular color, we are able to get two measurable values on the same chart. So one is representing the length of the bar is represented by the sales and the color of the bars are represented the profit. Fine? Clear. So next is, in the bar chart itself, we also have what you call it as a clustered bar chart or multi-column bar chart and also we have a uh, what you call as a stacked bar chart. So we'll look into this one. So first we'll see this is our regular bar chart or a column chart. Okay, since it's in a vertical bars, we call it the column chart. Now we'll just see this as a multi-column bar. Multi chart. Multi-column bar chart. Okay, a multi-column chart or something. So if I have to do this, I'll just select the same thing. Okay, uh, the same as clustered column chart. Now in this case, what will I do is, so let me go with uh, what is a region wise sales. I'll just add the X axis as region because X axis are going to be a dimension. I'll add the region. So we can see the good option here is we can just hit on this add and select the region. Okay before we used to select from here still that option is supported but in this is a new version okay new interface enhancements what is there in the power bi so it is almost similar to working like excel yeah and um, in the y axis i want the measurable value i'll select all the measurable values will be having the summation because they are the numerical calculative columns so i'll select the sales so i'm able to see the region wise how the sales are happening so we see that West region has done the highest sales and the South has done the lowest sales. Now we are, we are learning about multi-column. Multi-column is, see, we have one dimension that is a region-wise, okay, and the measurable value, that is a sales. Region-wise, what is the sales? Now what I want here is, in this, I want to add a second dimension. So that means the West region has done the highest sales, but I want to see the contribution by the segment-wise. So which segment of the customers have done the highest sales in the West region, whether it's the consumer segment or the corporate segment, I want to analyze that. So what I will do here is we can see we have a legend. We can see here we have a legend. I'll just hit on this legend and I'll add one more dimension. Since I wanted to go with the segment, I'll just select the segment. 
So now when you see, okay, the West region, whatever the sales has been done, it is divided based on the segment. And uh, yeah, segment. And you can see this has been given as a legend over here. So let's say the consumer is this, the corporate dark blue, and the orange color is a home office. So almost in every region, we see that consumers have done an outstanding sales. That means we have the maximum business happening from the consumer segment of customers. Corporate segment, a kind of an average around 30% kind of things and a very low business from the home office. So that is what we are able to analyze from this. So how the, each this one has been contributed. So that is each segment, how much they have been contributed. We are able to see this side by side. That is why it is called as a multi-column bar chart. So in this, what is the advantage we get? We get very clear clarity telling that you know how each segment wise is contributed for the region sales. Okay, how the second dimension is contributed for the first dimension. The first dimension is the region, how the region has been achieved. And for that region, how the second dimension, that is nothing but the segment wise, how they have been contributed. So we are able to get this data. Fine, clear. Fine. So next is, we have what you call it as a stacked column chart. So we learn about the stacked column chart. What is a stacked? Stacking is nothing but arranging one above the other. Okay, you want to arrange the columns one above the other. We use the stacked column chart. So now what I will do for that is, again, I'll just go to the visual gallery and I'll just go for, so I can take this particular stacked column or you can even go with the regular column chart itself. The same column chart itself, not an issue. Now, as usual, I'll just take the same. Uh, first thing is I'll take region-wise how the sales has been performed. Okay. And in the y-axis, I'll take the measurable value. That is, I will take the sales. Sales. Okay. The region-wise how the sales have happened. And within the region, I want to see the contribution by the segment-wise. For the legend, I will add the segment. Okay. Um, now, I want this to be stacked. So, what I will do is I'll just take this as a stacked column chart. Sorry. So when, as soon as I say stacked column chart, you can see the second dimension that is the legend what we have added. Okay, that is the second dimension that we have added. It has been arranged one above the other. Okay, now what is the kind of a benefit you get in this one? Okay, the kind of benefit that you get from this one is we can easily know, okay, which particular, uh, what you say, uh, segment has done the highest sales or sorry, uh, which region. West region has done the highest sales, then is your east and the west, uh, central and the south. And within that, we are able to see the contribution of the sales, how they have been contributed sales. So we see the consumers have done always the higher sale in this, but we are not able to exactly compare it like things. But since it has been stacked one above the other, so we, uh, we get more clarity in knowing like, you know, how the uh, overall totals has been achieved. Okay, and within that overall, how the individual segment wise sales is been done. So we are able to analyze this. Okay, now let us add the labels to this. If I have to add the labels, what is that I will do? I need to go to the visuals and I'll go for the labels here. So you can see we have a data labels and the total labels. See, when I say total, it shows me the grand totals. What is the total sales done? That is 0.73 million. That is 7.3 lakhs, 0.68 million, 0.5 million, 0.4 million. Okay, and within that, I want to see uh, segment wise how they have been contributed. We have a data labels. Data labels is the individual. So you can see the total sales in the West region is 0.73 million. Okay, out of that, you can see the contribution is the West region has contributed 0.36 million for 0 0.73, 0 0.36. It is almost 50%. Okay, so 0 0.36 plus 0 0.36, 0 0.72. Okay. So it is just almost like 49.9 or something like that. We can see 0.68 and 3.5. This is more than 50% contribution. Almost 50% contribution is there from each, um, from the consumer alone. Okay, that is what you're able to do a guesswork. So here I'm manually doing a, uh, a calculation, but if you want the overall calculations, yes, we can do that also. Uh, if I have to do the overall calculation, so we have uh, the same chart called as a 100% stack chart. So in that, that is like, you know, we have this, what you call it as a 100%. So we can see here, 100% stacked column chart. 
See, in the case of a 100% stacked column chart, what happens is you're not able to see what is the total value and individual value. You're not concentrating the actual sales value, but we are, we are majorly looking at percentage of contribution. Okay, so we see that in the West region, consumer has contributed 50.02%. In the East, 51.7, almost close to 52%. In the Central region, it has contributed 50.23%. And the South region, 49.93, almost 50% sales. So only this is slightly below 50. There is 49.93. It's almost close to 50. But you can see everywhere above 50% is the contribution from the consumers. And we see that home office almost everywhere is 18%. And when you see the corporate, it is almost like, you know, 29 to 31%. There is a range of contribution. We see that in the every region. So this is called as a stat, but 100% stacked column chart. Okay, so the same thing like when you talk about a bar chart, so it is nothing but you can just change instead of, you know, horizontal, you can just go with to this one. So this becomes a bar chart. Yeah, so this is about your bar chart. So mainly we understood bar chart is used for comparisons. Apart from the bar charts, okay, in the bar charts, we also have seen how do we apply the coloring based on the another measurable values so that I can compare multiple measures on the same column chart. Okay. And then we understood about the multi-column, which is arranged side by side. So this is mainly used when you have second dimension is added. For the first dimension is a region. Within the region, segment-wise, how they have contributed. But I want to see that in the form of a percentage or I want to see in the form of values, we can go with the stacking. Okay. So that is for this particular session. Okay. See you all in the next session. Thank you, everyone.